<laughs> What's up, Colliders? Welcome back to another episode of Bros Collide. Happy October. Happy Halloween. I'm the kid JW. That's Miss Diva Talk. Yeah. And we're back with a video here from Nightmare Files, three allegedly true dark web horror stories. It's just going to be interesting because my version of dark web is probably way different than what he's going to say. Probably. So, let's go into it. story begins not too long ago. I decided to use my computer skills to run a small darknet forum mainly just to share information without censorship. At first I was extremely paranoid about my site being hacked and having privacy being compromised, so I went online and began to research everything that I would need to ensure my own safety. After countless days of searching blogs, forums, and other material, I decided I was ready now. I didn't have any money so I couldn't just buy a VPS and host site. So I decided to use my old laptop. After all, I wasn't planning on running a major website. So after setting the server up, and what I thought was literally every single thing I could do to harden it against an attack, I put the site online. Everything went great for a couple of months. Donations rolled in as the user base grew larger and larger. After around 5 months, the user base had gotten so big, I had to upgrade and migrate everything to a new PC, which I built just to host the forum. And from there, everything seemed perfect. The site was running smoothly, and there were no issues with the migration until one day, when I came home, I noticed the PC had frozen. I didn't think much about it. Maybe just a software bug caused it, so... I rebooted it and that's when it was clear to me that something was wrong with the PC. The PC lit up and it beeped a few times, then shut off. So I thought to myself, okay, it's an hardware issue. Sounds like you just got hacked. Right. <laughs> After a few hours trying to diagnose the issue, I figured it out. And it turned out that the realm had been corrupted. I took it back to the store since it was still under warranty. The customer service rep just told me it might have just been a faulty stick. So when I got home, I replaced a stick of it's, it's possible. Ram, it's possible. Yeah, okay. Ram and had the site back up running within a few hours. Everything seemed to be perfect again. I apologized to the users for the downtime and everyone seemed to be happy. Fast forward a few months. The forum's been up and running for around a year. Well, maybe a year and a half. Now this is when everything started to get really weird. I finished work on a Friday. It was a gorgeous day in the middle of the summer. I came home and got something to eat. And I sat down in front of my PC and I noticed I had a message. Upon opening the message, I realized somewhere I messed up. I don't really know why anybody would actually target me. The message had my details from my name, address, bank details, passwords, private emails, private messages, everything nearly from every single device I owned. Because you were hacked. Now he's been hacked. Now he's been hacked, yeah. Now he's been hacked. I freaked out and I immediately took the PC offline, turned my internet off. But little did I know, this guy had done his research after a couple of hours pacing my room. I received a text message. I know everything about you. The message was sent via some type of SMS service, so there was no way to trace it. And then my phone rang. Don't talk, just listen. I know everything there is to know about you, and all I want is two Bitcoin, or things that get worse. I'll send you a text with the wallet details. The phone call ended just as quickly as it started. I opened my laptop up check my Bitcoin wallet and there was enough left over from the donations just to pay this guy off and hope that would be the end of it. So I entered the guy. No, it never stops.
stuff there. Because once you give in, oh, now I know I got you. See, the trick is you don't give in. What's, what's the worst they going to do to you? Come see your house and kill you? Well, they come to your house and... <laughs> yeah, that dress. If they come to your house, it's in your favor now. Man, you're over there in your backyard. And they still have all of his account and credit card information anyway, so they could eventually drain him dry anyway. Better call the bank, lock them cards. Guys, details and sit the payment. Then my phone rang again. Thank you for complying. Unfortunately, someone I know really likes you. He hung up. Panicking, I tried calling the number back. An automated message began to play. The number you have dialed has not been recognized. A few hours pass, and I began to think to myself, well, maybe the last call was just having fun and decided after a long day, I'd just go to bed. Sometime around 2 a.m., I was woken up by the sound of banging at my front door. I jumped out of bed and I turned on all of my lights, grabbing a knife from the kitchen. I walked slowly bringing a knife to a gunplay. Right. <laughs> toward the window and looked out. I could see someone standing by a car. When they spotted me, they got in and they drove off. I rushed to the door in hopes I might be able to get the light. Exactly. Why would you go open the window? The first thing, it's like I learned. You don't. You, One, you don't turn on lights. Right. Like, I don't know. License plate, but by the time I opened. So you don't look out the window. I did. They'd already turned the corner. As I turned, I noticed an envelope on the floor. I picked it up, went back inside and locked the door. I closed the curtains and sat in the kitchen. I placed the envelope on the counter, stared at it for around half an hour, trying to muster up the courage to open it. Did these guys really come to my home? I thought to myself. They have your address. Better move. After that 30 minutes was up, I decided enough was enough. I opened up the envelope and pictures fell out onto the counter. They were of me sleeping. These guys had not only been outside my house, they'd been inside while I was sleeping. The images had been edited. Strange love hearts had been added next to me. So now I was sufficiently freaked out. First off, who doesn't have an alarm system at this, in this day and age? <laughs> not everybody has an alarm system. Look, first things first, I did when I made sure I got my, I got my own place to get an alarm system. Me too. <laughs> and it wasn't even because of this. It was just because, well, okay, I don't want a break in when I'm asleep. I didn't go back to sleep. And when the sun broke darkness, I decided to head to the police station and tell them everything. I hadn't broke any laws, so... I hope they would just help me. At least I... They can't help. That's cyber... They, they, okay. After hours of... Exp you you got to follow. You got to go to the local police and they got to contact the private FBI and then they go to their home. Good luck with that. Explaining everything to them. They told me there was nothing they could do. Was, At this was, point, I had never... If he was a big guy, if he was a corporation, we got you. He was a little... He was a little... He was a regular person. He was like, we can't help you, bro. If it's a business... Because technically, nobody did anything to him. Right, but if he was a business, we'll get the FBI involved. Let's see what's going on. Well, I mean, can't do nothing. Never felt so alone in the world and helpless. I was scared of what this guy was planning. I didn't have the foggiest idea of what I was supposed to do or expect, so I decided to wipe everything off my laptop, off my PC, and my phone. I picked up everything that I needed, stuffed it all into a bag, and decided to leave. I had a couple of friends that I knew I could rely on, so I called up my buddy Marcus, and we met, had a few beers, and I explained everything to him. He offered me a place to stay, and I hoped that would be the end of it. I was definitely wrong. Duh. A few days later, it happened again. There was a knock at the door, first thing in the morning. Marcus and I both went out to find another envelope on the floor. You think they're not following him? Yeah, I, I, real, I realized that as soon as I asked the question. I, I realized that. Now you didn't involve your friend in, in this bullshit too. <laughs> Same thing. Pictures of me sleeping, but these were in Marcus's house. I started freaking out again and Marcus just said, Okay, we need to do something. Maybe set a trap or something. So we went over numerous ideas. 
Everything you could think of from cameras to baiting him. And we settled on the idea of staying up during the night and locking him in the room. We filled the bed up with pillows, set up cameras, and even barred the windows in the room. This is definitely some white people shit. <coughs> when you really think about it, this is definitely... So, you don't have an alarm system. They were able to come in and take pictures of you at your own crib. You go to a friend, explain... What You went to the police, explain there to them. They like... There's nothing we can do. You go to a friend who tries to help you. They end up taking pictures of you at your friend's house. So your friend doesn't have an alarm system either. This is definitely some white I'm sorry. It is. This, this. They went to DPD. That's why they said they couldn't help them. All I'm saying is this. First off, you know the friend was not us. Because if you came to me with some issues, you ain't coming here. Right. You ain't coming to my you house. You ain't coming to my house. I'll put you up. <laughs> I, I will help. Pay to put you up in a hotel, a motel, Holiday Inn, something, but Look, you ain't paying it with me. Give me your money. Give me the money from the bank. We go pay cat. We we'll get to go to the, go to a store, get a a gift card, and we go pay with that. Bring out that cash app card. We hid in the room next to the door. After a few hours. Now we're gonna set a trap. Some Home Alone shit. <laughs> no, this is some Scooby Doo shit. <laughs> Zoinks. <laughs> To pass, we heard the lock rattling on the front door, and we knew it was game time. We left the door just slightly ajar so we could see outside. As he went past, and the moment he went into the room, we both sprung to action as quickly as possible. We closed the door and. No, I wanted to just, you know, shoot him. Okay. I would have. Me too. That's why I said. <laughs> Because once you cross onto my property, inside my house, it's a wrap. Exactly. Locked it from the outside using a chair and metal bar. There was only one way he was getting out. He'd have to destroy the door. We could see the silhouette of him as he paced the room, quietly. It was creepy. We called the police as we kept an eye on him. At last I thought I can finish this and move on with my life. Just as the police arrived, we noticed this guy take a gun out, place it to his head, then he held up a sign which read, I love you, and he pulled the trigger. The police- What the hell? I did not see this coming. Me either! And this is just the first story! He barged in, guns drawn, and told us both to get on the floor. We complied and shouted out that he's in there, pointing at the door. The police removed the makeshift lock and entered the room called for an ambulance and put me and Marcus in the back of the police car. I sat in the interview room for a good couple of hours. I guess while they carried out the investigation, when the detective came in and sat down in front of me, opening a folder, placing pictures on the table. Do you know her? Her? I said looking at the pictures, and I told him no. He looked at me and said, This is the person who's been stalking you. And he then began to tell me that they visited her room and found a shrine with photos of me all over the place, from restaurants to the gym and even shopping. So this was a fatal attraction type situation the whole time? He went on to tell me that she'd been the one that sent the messages, made the phone calls, etc. They also found a diary which had some kind of future plans for me in her. She wanted me to be her husband, and we'd been chatting for around a year and a half. After I explained everything, the detective said I was lucky to be alive. She had actually planned to drug me and kidnap me. She had even had some makeshift lock bed so I wouldn't be able to escape. To this day, I feel lucky and I haven't been on a dark web ever since. some fatal attraction slash misery type shit. Coming soon to Tubi. <laughs> As always, Colliders, if you enjoyed this reaction, go ahead and hit the like button. If you aren't already a Collider, I don't know why you're not. Subscribing is free. It's right there. Let us know how you feel about this story in the uh, comments if you uh, have a different opinion on this story than we do. Let us know in the comments. Of course, where you can check out Nightmare Files YouTube channel or this uh, three-part horror story uh, for yourself. 
The links will be in the description below, along where you can check out me and the official JW on our own YouTube channels. You got anything else you want to add? Mm -mm. Okay. Bye, y'all. Later.